your friend Barry Long. Uh, Barry uh, and I served on committee on ministry for more years than we probably care to count. count. Barry and I um, traveled together doing triennial visits, doing interventions in the church. And some of you might remember that Barry was actually a part of my installation commission here 13 years ago. And so it's appropriate that he be back to represent the Presbytery in part of the service later down the road. Um, now, switching away from all of those things, I want to say, again, thanks last week for those who gave so generously the two cents per meal offering, kind of in Rosellen's honor. Um, we collected more. It's in there than we normally do by far, and uh, that's because of your generosity. Okay, here's the deal, the challenge. Two cents per meal offering will be collected again on Worldwide Communion Sunday, the 1st of October. You've proven you can give $1.80 each time you collect. Every one of them. So put your pennies in the plate uh, when the two cents per meal offering is collected again. But Mary, I like what the Presbyterian women said when we were at the meeting. We like silent pennies. Yes, we like silent pennies. That's exactly correct. Exactly correct. Um, again, so many people here. Uh, but we do have a little business. The session has their regular state in meeting on Thursday evening with some important things coming. Dr. Dan Waves, our Presbyterian Executive, will be moderating that meeting. And also, just so you know, uh, Dan Williams will be preaching uh, next Sunday. Everybody's kind of said, we don't know what's happening. Well, welcome to the world of interim time. Uh, we do know that we have preachers lined up, thanks to Nora. Uh, preachers lined up through September, and she's working on the first part of October. The session is probably, I think, going to hear a recommendation on an interim pastor. And we'll vote on that on Thursday night, and they will let you know, you know, at the appropriate time so that you will be well taken care of in all of this time. Um, yesterday, as I mentioned, there were, there were lots of cards and gifts, and some of the cards got separated from gifts. So if for some reason you do not receive a thank you note, you can feel free to call me and say, hey, what about that 50 you gave me? Okay. What about that? Uh, or you can also, you know, just let me know because we tried to keep track of that. But there was a book, a Dr. Seuss book, that someone gave me. And if there was a card, it got separated from it. And my friend Nellie and, and Charlie were there with me last night, and Nellie read it to me, the Dr. Seuss book. And it was just delightful about getting older, basically and what we do and all. So if the giver of that gift wishes to own up to it, I would be delighted to hear who, who gave that gift. Um, I think other announcements, the uh, sign-up sheet for the October fellowship dinner is out on the table. Sign up now. Uh, that would be a wonderful program presented about the next NASA manned flight rocket going to the moon and Mars. And I asked Chris, well, when is that scheduled to go? And he said, someday. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I think that's all the announcements. Oh, yeah, they're having a reception after church. So we invite you to come downstairs and have some cake and punch um, after church. It's a little awkward to say, it's in my honor. Uh, but come down. I, I, I do want to be able to speak to each one of you. Uh, so uh, come downstairs after the church and share a few moments there. It's our custom to take a few moments to greet one another, and let me emphasize a few moments, and we'll do that at this time. <laughs>
pages number 
and she has a cross in here. You are still my pastor and always will be, so take this and remember me. Well, we're going to No, we won't be We're going to stand up and sing the next hymn, which is number four. Forty-six. Thank you.
Our New Testament lesson this morning is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter, no it's not, it is taken from Paul and he's speaking to the Ephesians, but it's from the book of Acts uh, chapter 20 verses 17 through 36. From Monetus he sent a message to Ephesus asking the elders of the church to meet him. When they came to him, he said to them, You yourselves know how I have lived among you the entire time, from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears, enduring the trials that came to me through the plots of the Jews. I did not shrink from doing anything helpful, proclaiming the message to you and teaching you publicly from house to house as I testify to both Jews and Greeks about repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus. And now, as a captive to the Spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and persecutions are waiting for me. But I do not count my life of any value to myself. If only I may finish my course and the ministry that I have received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. And now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom will ever see my face again. Therefore I declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose of God. Keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock, of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, that he obtained with the blood of his own Son. I know that after I have gone, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Some, even from your own group, will come distorting the truth in order to entice disciples to follow them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease, night or day, to warn everyone with tears. And now I commend you to God and to the message of His grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing. You know for yourselves that I worked with my own hands to support myself and my command companions. In all this, I have given you an example that by such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus. For he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down with them all and prayed. May God bless to us this reading and hearing of his holy word. Amen. Paul had been with the church in Ephesus for three years. And according to him, in this time, it was kind of three long years. Now, I'm not trying to draw direct, indirect perhaps, but not direct correlation between Paul and myself, uh, because I don't count myself among the Pauls of the world. For one thing, I'm one. Um, so there are some similarities, however, in a concluding a ministry. This passage first became meaningful to me in about March, February of 2003. Now, as a Presbyterian, to remember an exact date is pretty overwhelming. So the fact that I remember what year it was and about what time is, is pretty amazing. But this passage became meaningful to me because it was a Bible study text that I was teaching at the Conway Church right before I was called to Michigan. 
And I had already accepted the call to Michigan. And as my dear friend Sandy Hill knows, I did not want to go to Michigan. Y'all have heard the story, those of you who are members here. But the night before this Bible study, this was the text. And as I read that first, in that first part, it talks about I'm heading to Jerusalem, my words. And I don't know what awaits me there. And all I could see in that text was, I am going to Michigan, where I do not know what awaits me. And that was really very true. I had no idea what it meant to be a Presbyterian executive. I had no idea what the weather would be like in Michigan, <laughs> being a native Floridian. I had no idea where I would worship. I had no idea about anything. And I went kicking and screaming to Michigan. And I remember Sandy saying to me after I said, I don't want to go to Michigan. And she said, well, whose will is it anyway? <laughs> well, sometimes we're in that place in our lives where we need to recognize that it's not all about us. It's about something larger. And in this particular passage, as Paul, as Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus, he's recognizing that it's about the larger church. He's done what he could do there in Ephesus. And he gives a good talking to, to the elders. Elders. And, and it's an interesting fact that probably 90% of our congregation are elders. They may not be currently serving on the session, but you are elders. So he, he says to the elders, it's time for you to take care of things. It's time for you to see to the flock. And in any transition, there are opportunities for little things to start happening. And they will. There have already been people saying, well, why don't you have a new pastor yet? The body ain't cold. <laughs> Give me a week or two. The body ain't cold. So, you know, I think that the reality is we often are wanting to get everything so ordered. Anybody type A personalities here? I've become an A minus, by the way. I was telling Charlie that last night. Um, we like to know what's coming, don't we? We want to know what's happening. We want to know what the step is. And if there is one thing in the life of Christ that we need to get through our thick skulls, it's that we are led by God's Spirit. And we don't always know where the wind is going to blow us. It might blow you to Michigan. You know, it might blow you somewhere else. And probably as we all look back on our journeys, we could say, well, there's this little stop that I wasn't really thrilled about. But in retrospect, I can say, yeah, there was something there. I was telling Charlie and Nellie last night about how when I applied to college, I did not end up going where I wanted to go. They rejected me. I, I know, it's hard to imagine, but I was not accepted. And yet, the place that I ended up was exactly where I needed to be. And I could see that even as I was going through college. I could see that. Paul talks about persecutions and things like that. When I was ordained in the Presbyterian Church in 1980, I was the only female pastor in the Presbytery. And it took a number of years before there were more, and now Barry can tell me far better than I know, there are lots. We've come a long way, baby, haven't we? We've come a long way. But at those times, there were persecutions. Even Coming to this church, there were people who left the church before I hit the ground because the church had called a woman. Well, there was. What can I say? There will be some persecutions as you seek to lead the people of God. And I'm talking to everybody here, not just the people that are members of this congregation. Everybody has the calling to listen to God and to do what is God's will in the overall church. Paul says, I've preached the word. I've done what I can. 
And I, I feel like I have also tried my best, not just here, but in 38 years of ministry, or day ministry. I, I think I've done the best I can. Was I always successful? No. Was I always liked? No. <laughs> Was it a hard time at times? Yes. But because God's Spirit guides and leads each one of us, what happened in these years, I think, is really what God wanted to happen. Sometimes I was on my last ounce of grace. And God graciously <coughs> put a hand over my mouth. When I wanted to speak, but God knew that what I would speak in that situation would not be God's grace. And so I am thankful for those experiences. Paul is heading to Jerusalem, and he really didn't know what was going to await him there. He was going to go. And the elders kept saying, no, don't go back to Jerusalem. That's going to be a bad scene. They're going to arrest you, you know, whatever. Don't go, don't go. But God's Spirit led him to Jerusalem. And there, if we read on in the book of Acts, we, we learn the story that, yes, indeed, he was persecuted, he was arrested, he ended up in Rome in the jail. And, and so it wasn't like, I'm retiring. It was moving on to a place that had lots of unknowns. People have asked me, what are you going to do? Well, those of you who know where my journey has been for the last year know that I'm going to take some time and breathe. Before I walked up here, I was getting Mike to the sound booth, and Chris shows me the little post-it. He knows I love Jimmy Buffett. And so he shows me the little post-it, because I'm back there kind of going, you know, I've been surprised by a few people who have appeared, and I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and he shows me the little post-it that says, breathe in, breathe out, move on. One of my favorite Jimmy Buffett quotes. So I think for all of us, there will be some of that. And for me, there will be some of that in the next few months, for sure. Some people have said, you're going to be an interim. I've said no, but today I will modify that too. I don't think so. Um, I saw that. <laughs> He said, that's progress. That's its last night, by the way. You know. I don't think so. Because the structure of that kind of ministry, I've done for 38 years being ordained. And I think that my ministry will lead on to a different kind of thing. Um, supply preaching, put me on the list, Barry. You know, occasionally maybe moderating a session meeting when there's someone who session that needs to be moderated. Yeah. But the regularness of leading is exhausting. And with this last year, especially with dealing with my friend Drew, there's not much of me left. And so I'm going to breathe in, I'm going to breathe out, and I'm going to move on to whatever lies before me. I hope it's not in prison. <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> you never know. I, I, I hope that it's not a lot of persecutions. Uh, but I don't know. And, and just as you as parishioners, you as Christians in other churches elsewhere, don't really know what's ahead. The thing you can count on is that God's Spirit will lead you. And that's what Paul says. The Spirit. The Spirit is leading me to Jerusalem. So, as Paul said goodbye, and it was true, he didn't really see their faces again. I don't expect that here. One of the things in our kind of separation between church and pastor is, I can no longer be your pastor in spite of what Sawyer said. I can't be your pastor, but I will always be your friend. And I hope that that works, and I, I think that's true, because yesterday I was so overwhelmed by the fact that friends, former parishioners, came from each of my previous churches to be there with me and celebrate. And so that reminded me, and I, I come into today with you know, that hope that 
that that's going to continue. Um, you may not need it to continue, but I probably do. So the friendships will last forever. So it's not really about saying goodbye. It's about saying, we'll see you sometime. But for many of you in this congregation, it may be saying goodbye. And if that indeed is the case, there is a day coming when we will say hello. And I look forward to that day with those whom I may not see again. As Paul knelt with the elders in Ephesus, I will not kneel, because I would need most of you to get me up again. But let us pray. Oh God, we do give you thanks for the journeys that have been set before us. We give you thanks for all of the twists and turns in our lives that have brought us into each other's lives. I give you thanks for friendships. I give you thanks for the continuation of those friendships. And I ask that you would remind each of us that wherever the Spirit leads us, we must follow. So we thank you, O oh God, for the blessings you give us in life. Help us to be obedient as we seek to serve you wherever we are. And I ask it in Christ's name. Amen.
to tell you that I asked Walter especially to sing that piece. It was sung at my ordination 38 years ago by my voice professor from college. And it means the world to me, so thank you. As we come to God in prayer this morning, I would uh, invite you to turn your attention to the prayer concerns which are listed in the bulletin and ask if there are any others, any joys or concerns which you have. Let us come to God in prayer. Oh. 
mercy will love you completely. All that we have, we return to you, who endow us with bountiful gifts. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time I would invite Gary and Walter to come forward as we tend to the business at hand, and I would invite you to find the insert in your bulletin, which is labeled Dissolution of the Pastoral Call. Good morning. Good morning. The Church of Jesus Christ is constantly changing. Our church is changing as well. Babies are born, children grow up, people commit themselves to one another. Loved ones and friends die. Newcomers join our community and our church. Others leave, moving on to new places and new opportunities. It is important that we recognize these times of change. Today we say farewell to one who is leaving our fellowship. On March 13, 2005, this congregation voted to call Reverend Mary E. Sample to serve, us, to serve with us as our pastor. Her first Sunday was June 12, 2005. Today that call comes to an end. I thank you all, members and friends of this church. Your kindness and support, your caring and love have sustained me, and I will remember you with gratitude to God and great affection. Please join me in the litany of prayer. Let us pray for the saving presence of our living Lord. In your world, be present, be present Lord. In this congregation, be present, Lord. In this community, be present, Lord. In this presbytery and the whole church, be present, Lord. In the homes and hearts of all your people, be present, Lord. Let us pray for the mercy of the Lord, for work begun but not completed. Lord, have mercy. For expectations not met, Lord, have mercy. For wounds not healed, Lord, have mercy. For gifts not shared, Lord, have mercy. For promises not kept, Lord, have mercy. Let us, let us give thanks for our journey together in this place, for friendships made, for joy celebrated, and for times of nurture and growth. Thanks be to God. For wounds healed, expectations met, gifts given, and promises kept. For our fellowship in Jesus Christ and for the love of God which has sustained us.
the members and friends of First Presbyterian Church of Titusville release Reverend Mary E. Sander from service as your pastor. Do you, Reverend Samuel, dear friend, recognize and accept the completion of your ministry with this congregation? <laughs> I do, with thanks to God. Let us pray. Loving God, Alpha and Omega, you are both beginning and end. Our endings and our beginnings are rooted in your love. Whether near or far, we are held close by your love and kept safe from any lasting loss. Let our time together end with your blessing. Touch all memories with your grace and peace. Help us to live with courage and gladness in the future you present us. In every time and place, May we offer you our highest and our best. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 260, and I would invite you, if you are able, to stand.